starts right now. We are getting closer and closer to the big day. That's right. Eclipse day and it all comes down to clouds. Adam. Oh, it's been stressful. We've been watching these computer models so closely and we're sticking with our forecast here. We still think for San Antonio and the Hill Country, a 60% chance of a partially blocked view of the eclipse. That would mean through translucent clouds and or breaks in the clouds that we have that would allow you to see it from time to time. There still is that off chance that 40% chance to not be able to see it at all for it to be totally blocked in our sky and really the weather pattern and the setup we have is going to come down to the wire. So if you're thinking of changing plans, our advice is just stick with what you have right now because you could change plans and be even unluckier than your original plan. We just don't know if there one place is going to be better than the other quite yet. We still need more time with this, and here's why. So we have this upper level disturbance that's swirling over the western U.S. That's going to bring our weak pre-eclipse cold front, which will play a role in our weather and especially the low clouds behind that front as it washes out into Monday morning. But especially this right here, this upper level disturbance near Alaska, that's going to drop southward this weekend, and that's going to bring the eclipse high thin clouds and we're trying to predict these high clouds that haven't even formed yet. They will over the weekend over the Pacific. We'll get an idea of just how translucent they are, how much you can see through them and how thick they are. And then also we have to determine the low stratus clouds, which will be forming Sunday night. Right, that makes our job even uh, more challenging there. We're going to jump into this in more detail and talk about the progression of these systems and that low cloud factor, along with some things you need to plan for this weekend. And some changes you'll notice, especially if you're going to the air show, all that coming right up. You don't want anybody to be parking on the shoulder. Don't be wearing your glasses when you're driving. Take caution and be prepared. That is text dot message for people hitting the road for Monday's eclipse. The night team's Avery Everett explains what you can do to get the best view without potentially getting stuck. Ahead of the eclipse, highways across San Antonio are already filling up. And that means an empty lot for Pilata Auto. We are fully booked right now. That's one thing. So even if they call us, we don't have. All vehicles this weekend have been booked out for weeks at this car rental agency off Vance Jackson. But owner Sahir Maswadi says people are still looking for rentals. Yes, we're expecting a lot of calls. And other agencies across San Antonio are showing similar patterns. Online, many big rental companies here have limited, if any, inventory through Tuesday. Whether you're renting a car or driving your own, Texas officials are urging any driver behind the wheel to have a plan before they head out this weekend. TxDOT wants drivers to use drivetexas.org to plan their trip and see real-time traffic updates, especially for those driving electric vehicles. Because once you get deeper into central Texas, some towns like Vanderpool have limited charging options. We've only got one, but at least we got something in case someone gets in a bind. This charger is the only one in the western portion of Bandera County for miles. At least we're prepared for it. That's why TxDOT says being patient and planning ahead is all you can do ahead of this weekend. With days still before the eclipse crosses over Texas, roads are expected to only get worse. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Here's a tip, something that can help you. The Energy Department has a map showing charging stations across the U.S. You can use it to map your route to the eclipse and also find charging stations along the way. And we have that link for you on KSAT.com. By the way, also on Monday, RJ Marquez is going to be at TransGuide during GMSA and GMSA at 9, giving you traffic reports. He's going to help you get to where you need to be on Eclipse Day. You can also scan this QR code on your screen for everything you need to know about the total solar eclipse. You can access it all. You'll instantly see videos and articles that will help you navigate here in San Antonio and up in the hill country. A man is dead tonight after he was shot while he was sitting in his vehicle. It happened in the parking lot of a northeast side nail salon on Perrin Bidal near Thousand Oaks Drive. Police said that shooter fired multiple rounds, then took off in a white sedan. No one else was hurt. At this hour, officers have not made any arrests. So this is really the last thing, the last thing that you expect to see here 
on the road, but this morning in Converse, an 18-wheeler was engulfed in flames on Loop 1604 at Lower Seguin Road. Converse police took these pictures. They posted them on Facebook. That accident backed up traffic for hours. The northbound lanes of Loop 1604 had to be shut down for obvious reasons. Shirts Cibolo Universal City ISD also says that bus routes had to be delayed because of this. At this hour, though, we still don't know how that truck caught fire. Was it self-defense? The man accused of killing someone at an apartment complex nearly three years ago took the stand in his own trial today. Tavares Anderson accused of shooting and killing Malcolm Everett during an argument in 2021. Now, since the start of that trial, the defense has argued that Anderson shot and killed Everett after he was attacked. That's what Anderson repeated today when he took the stand. The case has now gone to the jury for deliberations. They're going to begin on Tuesday. If found guilty, Anderson faces up to life in prison. A South Texas mayor has resigned amidst a drug trafficking investigation. According to the local news station KRGV, Progresso Mayor Gerardo Alanis submitted his letter of resignation after he was released from federal custody yesterday. He faces four charges related to cocaine distribution. And in his resignation letter, Alanis thanked the Progresso community for the opportunity to serve over the past decade. Back here in San Antonio, it's a focal point of Alamo Plaza, and there are plans to restore it. And those plans are moving forward. We're talking about the Cenotaph near the Alamo. Today, the Texas General Land Office and the Alamo Trust plans to restore it by keeping the structure in place as preservation work begins. The 60-foot tall monument due for a number of repairs, including patchwork and updated drainage system. Renovations set to begin in July. They're expected to wrap up in early 2025. Now let's go to your night beat news flash in Houston. Four women have come forward to say that a NASA aerospace engineer sexually assaulted them. And now investigators think there could be more victims. The Harris County District Attorney's Office calls 37 year old Eric Sim a quote sexual predator. He currently faces six, six counts of sexual assault. Investigators believe that his NASA job helped gain credibility with the victims. NASA says that it's cooperating with authorities and will take appropriate action based on the investigation. Meanwhile, authorities are asking any other potential victims to come forward. You know, you see a lot of things in cities like New York and Philadelphia, but a quake? Yeah, that's rare. And this morning, the area got one, a magnitude 4.8 earthquake. New York Governor Kathy Hochul called it one of the largest earthquakes on the East Coast in the last century. The damage wasn't widespread. The U.S. Geological Survey says that more than 42 million people might have felt it. Okay, you're not going to be able to shop at 99 cents only stores soon because they're shutting down. The retailer says that things are just getting more expensive. The discount chain operates 371 stores in Texas, California, Arizona, and Nevada. There are five of them just here in San Antonio. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. All right, can you feel the lotto fever in the air? The Powerball jackpot continues to grow. It is up for grabs right now. It sits at a staggering 1.3 billion dollars. That's a billion with a B. The cash value a little over 608 million. And as you can see, the clock is ticking down until the next drawing. You have until tomorrow night to get those tickets. Good luck. Yes. Okay. So in the meantime, you don't win the million. Maybe you're looking for a summer job. Well, the city's Parks and Recreation Department wants to hear from you. It's filling a number of seasonal positions. So tomorrow it's hosting a job fair in the morning at the Roosevelt Park Clubhouse. The address is there on your screen. It's 311 Roosevelt Avenue. Now the city needs lifeguards, swimming pool supervisors and recreation assistants. The job fair is happening from 10 a.m. until 2 in the afternoon. You can also find more information on S.A. Parks and Rec. Dot com. Memorial services for, for beloved San Antonio ventriloquist Ignacio Nacho Estrada set for tomorrow. He was well known throughout the city, but especially on the south side where he performed a lot of local schools. Estrada passed away in January at the age of 77. You can read about his memorial and the lasting impact he leaves behind on KSAT.com. The total eclipse is getting everyone super excited about science, math, and even arts. We're going to tell you how local schools are getting the message across to kids and some lessons you can do at home. Plus, have you thought about how the total solar eclipse could affect your pets? What you need to know ahead of the big day. It's next on the Night Beat.
This is super important if you plan to bring your pet on your Eclipse road trip. First, don't worry about their eyesight because typically house pets like dogs and cats don't go outside and look up at the sun. But one vet out of Cibolo tells us that people should make sure their animals are comfortable, especially with the changing weather and potential big crowds. You might see a change in behavior. Some of the articles mention it could almost be like a storm is coming. So if you have kiddos with storm anxiety, um, maybe be aware of that. They might need their anxiety medications if they usually receive some or just trying to make their environment more comfortable. So with traffic expected to be busy across all of South Central Texas, that vet also asks owners to bring enough food and water with them to last them throughout any potential delays. Schools across San Antonio will have their eyes on the skies Monday afternoon over at Northside ISD's Burke Elementary. Hopefully they have those glasses on. Fifth graders are already learning about the solar eclipse there. As I tell the night team's Patty Santos, they're also learning how math and science play into our everyday lives. We are going to be doing our solar eclipse stations today. Fifth grade teacher Julianne Arswaga is excited about the real life science experiment just days away. Try to build some solar eclipse glasses that are going to be a lot sturdier. Students in her STEM class at Burke Elementary School are ready. We've been learning about the eclipse probably for about the last month or so, um, just like little pieces here and there. During our visit, students got a chance to use tools and their problem solving skills to show us what they know. And let's make sure that connect touches the battery. Mm -hmm. <gasps> there you go. Excellent job. What did you learn in this class in the last few weeks that you didn't know about the eclipse? Um, that it can like burn your, like the eye. That it's when the moon blocks the sun and then it makes it look like it's night. Educators are excited about the unique learning opportunity. By making connections with lighting, motion, the sun, moon, and shades, a gifted and talented class teacher, Maria Sandoval, says they can bring science and technology and art to life. A lot of the kids, you know, science isn't something that's very concrete. So doing this for the kiddos, these different learning opportunities, these um, experiences, that they're, it's really putting it into perspective for them. And it's, you know, they're really understanding the importance of what's happening. Here's how to keep the learning going at home. Parents can be asking their kids, you know, what exactly are you doing in STEM class? Um, how does that relate to what's going on? Teachers say make it memorable because it's a science experiment we might never get a chance to be a part of again. It's pretty neat. It's science. Who doesn't love science? Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. I mean, it is. It's really cool. Also, the day of the eclipse, we're going to be holding our eclipse special. We're going to be live on air and online from noon to two. We'll bring you live coverage throughout Bernie, Fredericksburg, Kerrville and places throughout San Antonio. Again, our eclipse authority special is Monday from noon to two. So we know that we uh, are going to have cloud coverage. We, we know that, that that's going to happen. The question is how much and how it's going to affect yes. our view. And you're going to be on site tomorrow. Yeah, uh, Justin and I were driving up tomorrow afternoon to Fredericksburg yeah. and we're staying just outside of downtown to the southeast along 290. Cool. I'll stop brewery. You're familiar with that? We're basically right across the street. Uh oh, you're in the area. Come by and say hi, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not be so wrong. Okay, let's get to this. Uh, this is a great photo of an example of what it was like during 2017's total solar eclipse over Cortland, Nebraska. Now, notice they had a significant amount of cloud cover overhead, but still during totality, things still went very dark. So even if you can't see the sun's corona due to the clouds and you can't see the sun's atmosphere and all of the cool essence that comes with totality, you'll still notice changes outside. And when you're in totality, it's like a light switch is flipped off. It's not like a gradual progression to darkness. It's just whoosh, the light switch turned off. It's gonna last depending on where you are, one to four plus minutes, and then poof, light switch come back, comes back on. And if it's really cloudy out, it'll just make it that much darker, like it's the middle of the night. So there's still gonna be impacts and, and, and effects anyway. We talked about this upper low bringing the pre-eclipse cold front. That's tomorrow night. Then the eclipse high clouds are covered from the system that's still up in Alaska. That's going to dive southward over the weekend, set itself up over the desert southwest. And whenever we get this kind of setup and scenario, it gives us the upper level wind off the Pacific, and it pretty much guarantees 
the high cirrus clouds. You know, the kind of clouds that sometimes you can look and see the sun straight through and it makes that ring around the sun. Those kinds of clouds, the wispy clouds that can be very translucent. The translucency is what we need to really hone in on in the days ahead. But those clouds haven't even formed yet. We'll have a better idea this weekend once they form over the Pacific. Also, Sunday nights or Sunday morning, actually Saturday night's cold front into Sunday morning pushes the humid muggy air, which means low clouds in the morning, basically this marine layer along the Gulf Coast. But then it's a wimpy front. It gives up on us. That's the problem. <laughs> gives up on us. If it had just stayed there, We'd be fine. We'd be in much better shape. But instead, it lets this humid air back into town and along the path of totality here. This reds the eclipse path. And whenever we get this scenario, it leads to low gray stratus clouds in the morning. This is the worst kind of cloud cover that you can have during an eclipse. However, those clouds do tend to break up by late morning to early afternoon. Depends on the thickness of that saturated layer and of course sun angle and other factors. So how many high clouds and when exactly the low clouds clear and break up are the big question marks and it's still too soon for that specific of information that we'll have more confidence in and we'll have more certainty over the next couple of days. We have these maps online, areas of town and an interactive map uh, where you have totality. 99% not going to do it. You're not going to have the same effect. It's not like God's shutting off the lights for a minute. Uh, uh You need to be in 100% for the full experience. All right, visibility tomorrow. It's going to be very low to start the day because of the humidity coming in tonight. So fog and drizzle tomorrow morning. Then the ceilings lift by the early to mid afternoon. I think the Thunderbirds fly around 3 p.m. tomorrow. Ceilings should be high enough by that time, but otherwise fairly gray overall tomorrow with very low clouds by Sunday. Perfect outside. Sunny, low humidity, 80s for high temperatures. And I do want to point out, you know, I mentioned the Thunderbirds. That's for the air show at Randolph Air Force Base. I saw them. Uh, I call it warming up <laughs> earlier today doing their flights. It was really cool uh, when I was at Ikea. Anyway, Sunday, the better of the two days this weekend for those outdoor activities. And then we get into Monday after the eclipse. Some isolated thunderstorms, possibly strong to severe. Something we'll be watching as people will be on the roads and people will be out and about. Some people will still be camping. Something to consider for after the eclipse. And then late Tuesday into early Wednesday, another round of storms possible. Actually, we think we'll have some scattered activity affecting 40% of our area. And again, could be strong to severe. So after the eclipse, the focus quickly shifts to the potential of strong to severe storms. All right, looking outside, we've got the clear skies for now, but with that humidity coming back, uh, the pesky low clouds, which usually aren't such a big deal, but they'll be moving in tonight. Thank you. All right, Spurs win, Spurs win, Spurs <laughs> win, and a former Pelican comes back to haunt his old team. Yeah, so Devontae Graham had a heck of a game, specifically yeah. in the first half tonight, and as Spree said, the Spurs win. Check this out, Wimby to Mamu, how awesome is that? And in girls high school soccer, Madison Harris saved the day for Taft, and as you can see, they're very excited coming up. All my seniors look at me. I was like, I have to get this one for them. Taft Junior goalkeeper Madison Harris came through for her seniors, keeping their dream of winning state alive. But first, it's Spurs game day. Victor Wimbenyama and the Spurs played at the New Orleans Pelicans tonight. The first half belonged to the home side as the Pelicans led by as many as 15 points. Devontae Graham paced the Spurs in the first half with 12 points and San Antonio trailed 61-51 at halftime. Third quarter, the Spurs come back on the run. Wimby throws it ahead to Sandru Mamokelashvili for the layup. That was nice. And then Devontae Graham does this three-pointer at the buzzer and the Spurs and Pels are tied after three at 86th. 
Fourth quarter, the Spurs get a little breathing room when Wimby drops in a triple for a six-point lead. So now it's a one-point game when Victor blocks Herbert Jones with 12 seconds to go, and that's pretty much your ball game. Spurs win 111 to 109. Wimby had 17 points, 10 boards, and three blocks. So the Spurs will come back home to host the 76ers Sunday night at six. Girls High School soccer today to class 6A regional semifinal between Round Rock and Taft at a Comelander Stadium was insane. The Dragons scored first, taking a 1-0 lead, but after a penalty inside the box, Jordan Matthews gets the equalizer for Taft, and it's one all. Then after another Round Rock goal in the second half, Layla Ronhell gets a chance to tie it up. She places this ball perfectly. Now this one would stay tied at 2-all, forcing penalty kicks, and it all came down the Taft goalkeeper, Madison Harris, who makes a diving save to seal the deal. Taft wins via PK 6-5. Harris and her nerves were high before the kick, but she stepped up big time. I was so scared just because, you know, a lot goes in during those PK shootouts. And so the back of your mind is like, oh, you, what if you can't get this one? But being able to work in those under pressure moments and just not thinking at all is what really pushes you to make that. And seeing all my seniors look at me, I was like, I have to get this one for them. I knew Madge was going to say that. I have faith in her and she's probably one of like the best keepers I've had on ever my team. But I had faith in Madge and I'm so excited for her and happy for her. It was amazing. I mean, Madge is phenomenal in goal and she's been a, a rock for us all season, so no surprise that she was able to make that and keep us alive. Taft will face Austin Westlake at Comalander Stadium tomorrow morning at 11 in the Class 6A Regional Finals. Take you to Corpus Christi for the 4A Regional Semis between CC London and the Bernie Greyhounds. It only takes Bernie a little over two minutes to score. Kaylee Stringfellow sends a through ball to Sophia Namvar. Backdoor goal, and the freshman puts Bernie on top 1-0. Four minutes later, Stringfellow attacking again. She's patient, wins the battle, turns and strikes. The goalkeeper stops it, but Isabella Pettit is there for another freshman goal. Greyhounds lead 2-0. Bernie wins a three-zip and will next play Davenport in the 4A Regional Finals tomorrow after they beat Cal Allen tonight 2-0. It was windy and sunny at TPC San Antonio, the Oaks course for the second round of the Valero Texas Open. Fan favorite Jordan Spieth made a move today. Par four, fifth hole, 43 feet away, and he finds the cup for Bird. He went four under 68 and is tied for 10th at three under par. Akshay Batia is still the man to beat. He went two under 70 today and leads the Valero Texas Open at 11 under par. Just try to focus on the right things, focus on the goals that I had to start the week, and just tried really hard to do that. And, um, you know, hit some good shots, made a couple putts, and, you know, it's good to kind of get that under par round. Atiyah heads into Saturday at 11 under. Three guys are five shots behind him, and Rory is fifth at five under. SAFC wants to turn out the lights after the break. San Antonio FC will play at the Las Vegas Lights FC tomorrow night. Winners are two straight. SAFC is one of seven USL championship teams to go undefeated in the month of March. Veteran defender Mitchell Tainer feels the team is coming along as they take their show on the road to Las Vegas. Yeah, I think we're trending in the right direction. Uh, you know, every every game this year we've taken huge positives from it. Uh, we're learning a lot together, enjoying the process together, getting better together. Um, we've had two really good results the last couple games, but we're not going to rest on that. we got more to prove and, and more games to win. So, SAFC will play at Las Vegas Lights tomorrow night at 8.30. You can watch it on ESPN+. Plus. In Texas League Baseball, the season opener for the Missions, and they hammer the Sod Poodles 12-5. And in Major League Baseball, the Silver Boot Series is underway, and the Rangers win it 10-2, improving to 5-2 on the young season. Two games that were not very close. Nope. Good to see the Spurs win, though. Absolutely. That was awesome. I love watching Mamu play also. I do, too. He's scrappy. He is. Yeah. Good night. We'll be right back. More clarity, if you will, on the Eclipse cloud cover forecast. Let's hope it trends toward clarity in the next couple of days because some very specific details still need to be totally ironed out. But there will be uh, some blocked view of the Eclipse. Some folks may not see anything at all. It's going to come down to location and timing. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. Prepare for the Eclipse. See you on Monday. Have a great weekend.